Welcome wrestling fans to FMW Frontier Martial Arts Wrestling, hardcore wrestling made in Japan. And we're here to call the action straight up, down the middle, no holds barred, and no Hollywood scriptwriters writing bad underwear jokes for us. No, I'm straight up, John Watanabe, along with my tag team partner. I am Dan the Mouth Navransky. You know, John, several of the North American promotions claim to be the definitive name when it comes to extreme hardcore wrestling. Well, we're here to show you that they are wrong and that FMW, the true hardcore promotion known worldwide, and once you're done watching this tape, you will be right along with us. That's right, Dan. All the matches you'll see today took place on April 29th, 1997, a day to remember at the Yokohama Arena, centering around something truly groundbreaking, a women's match pushed as the main event attraction on a male-dominated card. It was billed as the Megumi Kudo final fight, fondly remembered, though, as the Yokohama death match, featuring names you've heard of. That's for sure. You're going to see several big North American stars like Cactus Jack, Terry Funk, The Gladiator, Mike Awesome, and, of course, the Japanese hardcore legend, the man who started it all in FMW, Atsushi Onita. That's right, Atsushi Onita, who founded FMW in 1989. Right now, we'll see highlights from the undercard of the Yokohama Deathmatch. Let's go straight up to the action. In this undercard match, we see Flying Kid Ichihara in the red tights, the FMW turncoat who aligned himself with Ganosuke. Ooh, suicide dive by Nanjo. And one of the best high-flying wrestlers out there, but you're right, he was a turncoat. And just to show you how much faith Onita had put in him, he actually called him Onita Jr. when he was in the promotion originally in FMW. Here we have Crip Keeper in control over Nanjo, setting him up for a double underhook. Looks like a power bomb. Power bomb by the Crypt Keeper. An excellent move by the Crypt Keeper. Just one of many horror movie wrestlers that the Japanese just seem to love, can't live without. And here's a moonsault. Moonsault by Flying Kid Ichihara. Using that high flying technique he really mastered in Mexico and in Japan. And an excellent opening match here at the Yokohama Death Match. Now here's a 10 women's tag team match, but the focus is really on Nakayama in the red and black, who became the dominant female in FMW after Megumi Kudo retired. Now John, would you ever see a women's match like this in North America? Look at these women. There's no thongs, there's no tattoos, there's no synthetic breasts. Unbelievable action. These girls go all out in FMW. That's right, as we're seeing Miss Mongol taking control, really chopping away at Nakayama. Right now, here's Mongo with a senton, senton oh. splash onto Nakayama. Yeah, this is no mid-card comedy match, no TNA show. This is hard-fought women's wrestling as we see the babyface team taking control over crusher Maedo Mari. Now, this crusher does not carry beer kegs and dance the polka, but she's tough. Oh, John, I'm telling you, what a great matchup between these women. I can't believe how fast-paced the action is. They're all over the place. Well, keep in mind, this is only a taste of the hard-fought women's action you'll see later on tonight, the main event with Kudo versus the Shark in Kudo's retirement match. And right now, it's Nakayama taking control for her team as she executes the Frankensteiner, the Fra Frankensteiner. And uh, can this do it? Is this enough? Yes. Nakayama scores the pin for her team over Miss Mongol. Now here's a couple of guys who used to be with the World Wrestling Federation. That is right, John. Everybody remembers Hakushi. He fed and feuded with Bret Hart for the IC title back in 1995 in the WWF. And here it is, long before The Undertaker did it. This is Shades of the Spoiler, Don Jardine, the old, old school tightrope walk. Well, people might associate it with The Spoiler and The Undertaker, but nobody does it better than Shinzaki. That is for right. sure. DDT, DDT by Super Leather, who used and to be known as. That's right, he was Corporal Kirshner in the World Wrestling Federation. Mike Kirshner, a Sergeant Slaughter wannabe. I think he's much better as a Leatherface wannabe. Well, right now, oh, well, right now his knees aren't doing so well after that miss with that knee drop off the top. Yeah, Jinzei Shinzaki, formerly known as Hakushi in the WWF. And, oh, and you'll see uh, Shinzaki aligning himself with Hayabusa. Right now, uh, Shinzaki. Can he do it? Can he get him up? For, oh, Super Leather got out of that praying powerbomb that Shinzaki 
usually finishes off his opponents with. And right now uh, we have Super Leather, who is usually a brawler using an actual wrestling move. He's doing a vertical suplex. Vertical suplex, textbook form. Nicely done by Super Leather. Absolutely unbelievable. I don't remember seeing that in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Right now we see Super Leather going to the top turnbuckle. Looks like he's going for one of those flying knee drops on a Jinzei Shinzake. Oh, oh right on one. the knees, man. That has got to hurt. Right now, uh, Shinzaki is taking control, taking advantage of Super Leather being down, and he's going with a flying shoulder tackle, flying shoulder tackle off the top rope. Unbelievable stuff. And look at this. John, is he setting him up? Is it the praying power bomb once again? Yeah, it looks like the praying power bomb. One of his finishes. Oh! Is power bomb, yes. This could be it. One, two, oh, two oh, count. And he manages to kick out. You know, looking at that, Shinzaki had a little bit of trouble getting him up, but I thought for sure that was enough to put Super Leather away. Body slam, and Shinzaki is going to the top turnbuckle, a lot like his friend Hayabusa likes to do. And that's right. Like you mentioned earlier, we will see the two of them later in this tape. Drop kick, drop kick by Jinzei Shinzaki, who later on in this edition will will align himself with high-flying Hayabusa. And right now, Shinzaki takes oh. control. This is it, the chin lock submission called the Heavenly Lock. The Heavenly Lock. The Heavenly Lock, John. It doesn't look too heavenly for Super Leather. That is for sure. I would say he's in hell right now. But right now, I think Shinzaki got what he prayed for. Your winner, Jinzei Shinzaki. <laughs> Now, here are two factions of the FMW. We have Funk Masters of Wrestling versus Fuyuki Macho Body Wrestling. Nice triple teamwork by Fuyuki and Jeto Ongato onto Mr. Oya. And once again, a group of wrestlers that have worked all over the U.S. and all over the world, for that matter. Both Jado and Gato wrestled in Extreme Championship Wrestling in North America. And the Headhunters, they've worked in Puerto Rico, they've worked in Mexico. The most amazing flying big man I've ever seen. Right now we have a submission move by Fuyuki, a variation of the Dragon Sleeper. Fuyuki has wrestled since 1980. He's worked with All Japan the now defunct SWS, and he's a major force in FMW. He's kind of like the older brother among the FMW boys, and he really keeps the boys in line backstage, and he's showing his toughness and dominance right now on Oya in this match. Yeah, but not for long as two big clubbing fists come down from the Headhunters. Look at the size of these guys. Absolutely unbelievable. Oh, no, right now it looks like the Funk Masters of Wrestling are in control of this matchup. Not a good sign for Frontier Martial Arts Wrestling, the real FMW. And look at this, look at this. Oh, oh my close God. Line. Close line off the top rope by one of the big headhunters from Puerto Rico. Unbelievable the high-flying stuff that these guys can do. Sure, you expect that from someone like the flying assassin Hayabusa, but when you see the headhunters up there, look at this. Oh, oh, but the headhunter missed with that one. I mean, these headhunters, they have mass and size. They know how to use it by going off the ropes. Oh, nice flying drop kick by Ghetto. Ghetto, part of the Fuyuki Macho Body Wrestling Faction. And right now, there's Big Kodo Fuyuki, Big Boss, doing his war cry. And right now, oh, Ghetto went off the top turnbuckle with a flying crossbody on the outside. This match is unbelievable. There's so much going on, you can't even keep track. Fuyuki is known as Big Boss, and right now, he's trying to show the headhunter who's boss in this match. Uh, it's going to take a lock to chop down that big headhunter. Oh, oh and he does it. Close I don't believe line. it. Close line. Third time's the charm, but Oya makes the save for the Funk Masters of Wrestling. Right now we have Ghetto in control, body slams Oya, and Ghetto, who you, who you may remember, uh, wrestled Chris Jericho at Halloween Havoc in Las Vegas a That's few years correct. ago. Ghetto is uh, on the top turnbuckle, but it looks like Oya is back in control again. Oya is going for a superplex, a superplex uh -oh, off the top. Here comes one of the head headbutt. Oh, headbutt. Benoit, headbutt. Yeah, that shades of Chris Benoit headbutt. Benoit, by the way, is a friend of Hayabusa's. They wrestled in Mexico together. Body oh, slam by the They're back up there again. A splash. Oh, West. a splash off the top turnbuckle by the headhunter. One, two. Oh, but the Fuyuki Macho Body Wrestling Faction is working very well as a team. Now, that Power was the only bottom. way they were stopping that pin. They'd have to break that one up. Now, Ghetto and Jado are brothers, so they have a great personal relationship. But Ghetto and Jado also used to work for Fuyuki 
in Fuyuki Promotions. So all three of them have a good working relationship as well. Well, they better have a good working relationship if they're going to get past these guys. Oh, power bomb, power bomb by the headhunter. Uh, still not enough, though. Still not enough. Yeah, Ghetto somehow kicks out of that one. I don't know how, though. Oh. This is, oh no. This, He's going up there again. These guys are insane. This is 400 pounds plus of Puerto Rican beef. The headhunter going to the top turnbuckle for what looks like his moonsault. Whoa, over the top. Unbelievable. This has got to be the finish. A moonsault by a 400 pounder. That is very impressive. The kind of impressive action you'll see here in FMW. Unbelievable. action already and those were only highlights of the undercard matches this is truly shaping up to be one of the greatest wrestling cards of all time john where do we go from here well you're right dan the yokohama death match was one of the greatest cards of all time and to you critics who say that hardcore wrestling is all weapons and high spots with no ring psychology and no drama whatsoever throw that notion out the window this next match and this entire feud features friendship and betrayal, mixed emotions like compassion and revenge. Ganosuke versus Hayabusa. Let's see a little history of this feud. Here we have young Eiji Izaki, who later became known as the popular wrestler known as Hayabusa. This is Masa Honda, who later called himself Mr. Ganosuke. These two first became friends in 1987 and started training together as wrestlers in 1991. But while Hayabusa remained loyal in FMW through thick and thin, Ganosuke showed no loyalty whatsoever, leaving FMW and then coming back with his own evil agenda, showing utter defiance and disrespect toward the fans and FMW wrestlers that he turned his back on. Here, Ganosuke walks during the middle of a match involving Hayabusa, along with his new ally, Flying Kid. This out and out betrayal by Ganosuke of the FMW fans, the FMW wrestlers. No one was happy with the rude behavior of this man. Everybody wanted to see him gone. Everybody except one man. Hayabusa was confused at this point, not knowing whether to side with FMW or his former best friend, Ganosuke. And of course, complicating matters even more, the FMW office decided to turn down Ganosuke's chances at coming back to the promotion they said that is it you will not deal with us again but once again there was still one man who could not come to terms with this decision and that was Hayabusa the flying assassin finally his friend Masato Tanaka said what are you doing you can't deal with it <laughs> あの、二人が出て。どんだけ虫かかってるか。あなた一番知ってるはずじゃないですか。俺たち FMW と。あいつらと。一体どっちを取るべきですか。答えてください。何か言ってくださいよ。
あなたは平気ですか何か言ってくださいよ何か言う義務があなたにはあるでしょうAnd Hayabusa tried to knock some sense into his friend, Mr. Ganosuke. And of course, Hayabusa being so torn with emotion, his actions always caused problems. He was never at his full potential this whole time because he was so torn emotionally by what Ganosuke had done to him and to FMW by deserting him for a rival promotion, IWA. At this point in the match, Hayabusa's team was at a disadvantage. Ganosuke and Oya did a two on one number on Ricky Fuji. Now, even though Ganosuke scored a pin on Fuji, he still considered that beating Hayabusa. <laughs> Ganosuke was running rampant over FMW wrestlers, including Atsushi Onita, the founding father of FMW. Ganosuke was persistent in demanding a match against his former friend Hayabusa. ガノスケお前がどういう気持ちで帰ってきたのか分かんないけど俺たちがやってきた2年間お前がやってきた2年間ここできっちり視力をつけてやるいいか俺たち FMW は絶対に負けない In this semi-main event matchup at the Yokohama Arena, Ganosuke, accompanied here by Victor Quinones, the evil manager for Puerto Rico, finally got what he wanted after tearing away at FMW wrestlers in the dressing room, after knocking on the doors of the FMW offices repeatedly, he finally got what he wanted, a singles match against his former best friend, now enemy, Hayabusa, and to up the ante, this is a hair versus mask match. Which means, if Hayabusa wins, he gets to cut off the hair of Mr. Ganosuke. But if Ganosuke wins, he gets to tear off the mask of Hayabusa. And despite all that, John, you bring up some great points. But just think of what's going through Hayabusa's mind at this moment as he walks to the ring. This is probably the most important match of his entire career. His thoughts are scattered. His emotions are at an all-time peak. He has to fight. His greatest friend has turned into his greatest rival but at the same time Hayabusa wants to uphold the honor of FMW so you're right there are mixed emotions going on behind the mask of Hayabusa as Ganosuke wastes no time with that clothesline clothesline by Ganosuke I mean even before the bell rung Ganosuke wants to finish this off and he wants to tear off the mask of Hayabusa oh Hayabusa being very resilient, he knows his way around the ring inside and out with that move off the ring apron. Well, Ganosuke knows, he knows that it's the only way that he can get at Hayabusa right away is to take it to him right off the bat. Whoa! Somersault, somersault, somersault splash by Hayabusa. Showing that 
High flying ability he perfected in Mexico and Japan. Unbelievable. Just one of many high flying moves that we're going to see in this match with Hayabusa, the man they call the flying assassin, the Falcon. Kanosuke doesn't believe it. Hayabusa came back like that using his high flying arsenal. Ganesuke has really got to up the ante in order to take that mask off of Hayabusa. And right now we have Ganesuke attempting. No, oh, didn't work. Trying to suplex him to the outside. Didn't quite work. Oh! And remember, Victor is at ringside accompanying Mr. Ganesuke. So it's kind of like a two on one advantage over Hayabusa. Side headlock applied by Ganesuke. Whip into the ropes. Shoulder tackle by Ganesuke, but a kip up by Hayabusa. Drop Ooh. kick. Flying drop kick by Hayabusa. Now look at this here. Look at the power he gets on this drop kick. Wow, oh. right in the mush of Ganesuke. Unbelievable drop kick there by Hayabusa. Always lots of grace in the movements of the high flyer Hayabusa. Body slam. Leg drop. Ooh. Leg drop by Hayabusa, and he goes for the cover. One, two, two count. Oh, I don't, you know, I don't think Hayabusa even thought that that was going to get a cover there. He's got to work this man down. He's got to work him down to the bone to get a victory over this man. Oh, kick to the back of the head of Ganesuke by Hayabusa. Close line, close line by Ganesuke. And it certainly looks like Hayabusa is taking the majority of the punishment in this match so far. Hayabusa attempting a suplex on Ganesuke, it looks like, or is Ganesuke attempting a suplex on Hayabusa? They're both attempting to take out each other, John. Where have you been? Whoa! Hayabusa suplexes Ganesuke. Unbelievable. To the outside, a suplex off the apron. Whoa! Moonsault! Moonsault on chairs! That is FMW style. Whenever you see more than one chair on an opponent, followed by a high-flying move, that is FMW style. There's no doubt about it, man. If you see chairs, if you see that kind of brutality, you know you're watching FMW. Oh, plancha, or rather a senton. One of those Lucha Libre moves, a senton by Hayabusa. Come on, John, I know you're excited. It's a great match and everything. That's a senton, and you know it. Yeah, oh, well, when you're caught up in the action like this, you know, sometimes it's hard to stay in control. But right now, oh, oh. whoa, whoa! Wait, Hayabusa was in control, but Victor used his sneaky tactics. Well, it only makes sense that Victor Kionis heads up the heel team here. He is actually the foreign booker for FMW, so it made perfect sense for him to be behind Funk Masters of Wrestling. That's right, Funk Masters of Wrestling. It's a turncoat faction against the real FMW Frontier Martial Arts Wrestling. And look at this, double team here now. Oh! Ooh. And Gauske hits his own manager there with the clothesline. It was a two-on-one advantage, but right now, a suplex by Hayabusa shows that Hayabusa's in control. Oh. And look at that bridge, unbelievable bridge by Hayabusa on that suplex. Right he's now, going, like, what's this? He's what? going for an acai moonsault, acai moonsault, oh. Oh, but Ganosuke knew that it was coming. See, these two know each other so well. You're so right, John. They've been friends since childhood. They know each other's moves. They can actually predict what the other guy is going to do. And it's hard to, uh, it must be hard going into this match when you know the other guy knows your own playbook. Uh-oh, uh-oh, Ganesuke, he's got a foreign object now. He's got something, he's got a stick there. Ooh, jabs that pointed stick right into the gut of Hayabusa. Again, no holds barred. Ganesuke is the kind of sneaky rule breaker who'll do whatever it takes to rip off the mask of Hayabusa. And that is right, unbelievable action here in FMW. It's no holds barred. You can bring anything into the ring in these matches. That's right, normally it would be a disqualification in any normal match, but in this match, the referee and the fans want to see a clear-cut winner. Hair versus mask. Yes, if you've noticed, John, the word normal is not in the FMW dictionary. Absolutely not. Hardcore wrestling at its most hardcore. This is not Monday night. I mean, you'll see stuff here that you've never seen anywhere else. That is for sure. And this has got to be tough on Hayabusa, that's for sure, because oh. he's already got these unwrenching emotions in his gut. Now, Gauske is actually giving him all these shots to the stomach. Hayabusa is in big trouble at this point. But Hayabusa always has the fans on his side. He's the fan favorite in this match, no doubt. And I think Hayabusa will gain some strength from the fans. Oh! oh. Spinning kick by Hayabusa. Hayabusa on the comeback trail. Well, you bring up a good point about the fans, John, but you have to remember the fans can only do so much. It's up to Hayabusa himself. Fisherman! Fisherman bomb! 
the fisherman by Hayabusa, and Hayabusa goes on top of the falcon's nest for the firebird wow. splash, the firebird splash, the firebird splash. Oh, two count. That is unbelievable. 450 degrees in the air. Take a look at this, John. Yes, look at this that. This is the 450 that Hayabusa calls the firebird splash. Oh. Unbelievable action in this match. The Falcon Arrow, that's the Falcon Arrow. A uh, finisher, this could be it, one, two, oh, two count. And you bring up a good point there. In Japan, so many of the wrestlers have more than one finisher, not like here in North America. When you see a certain finisher, you know the match is done. Hayabusa, he has tons of them. You never know which one is gonna be the one to polish off his opponent. Well, right now, it looks like Hayabusa is trying to polish off Ganosuke, but oh, Ganosuke uh, cuts that short as Hayabusa was going for another high-flying finisher. Right now, both of these men are down. The referee makes the count. Which one is going to come to his feet first? Ganesuke in control now, picks up Hayabusa. Looks like it's going to be a power bomb. Oh, power vicious. bomb. Power bomb by Ganesuke, but Ganesuke seems to be out of it as well. Well, you have to remember, Ganesuke has, a, has that history of the bad knees, right? And it's really tough for him to pull off power moves like that on a consistent basis. He might even do himself more damage than he does Hayabusa. It looks like he's going to try another suplex. Ganesuke in control. Hey, hey, wait! That was a variation of oh the my God. That was a variation of the Falcon Arrow. That's one of Hayabusa's finishers. That was a slap in the face of Hayabusa from Ganesuke. That is so true. That is the ultimate insult, taking your opponent's finishing move and using it against him. Ganesuke is really trying to rub it into the face of Hayabusa and all of Hayabusa's fans. Frankensteiner! Frankensteiner by Hayabusa. Goes for the cover. Unbelievable. Check this out. Look at that aerial tactic. Wow! Just whips him over like nothing. Some people call that a Huron Conrada. Some call it a Frankensteiner. All call that spectacular. Exactly. And Hayabusa goes for a powerbomb. He's going up. We're going to see more of that high-flying action here. What, which one is it going to be this time? He's on the Falcon's nest right now where he's at home. Oh, he attempted a Phoenix Splash, but nobody home. Ganesuke rolling out of the way on that one, and he once again has the advantage. Ganesuke knew that was coming. He knows his Ooh. former best friend so well. Oh, good suplex there by Ganesuke. Did you see that German suplex? Hayabusa landed right on his head. This could be it. One, two. Oh, no, two. no, 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 no. Hayabusa's got a lot more left in him than that. Victor watching very intently at ringside, wanting Ganesuke to win this one. Hey, not only Victor watching intently at ringside, but all the FMW wrestlers are out there on this one, man. They all want to see Hayabusa get his revenge. Oh, suplex into a bridge. Nicely done. One, two, all. Oh. And Hayabusa reaching for the ropes, reaching for that help. Victor looked a little bit disgusted at ringside. I think he thought this one was over, but Hayabusa is down, but he's not out. He still has some fight left in him. And look at this, look at Ganesuke taunting the crowd how he's gonna get rid of Hayabusa. He's gonna do him in for good. And the fans don't like what Ganesuke has to say. Oh, Ooh. close line, close line to the back of the head of Ganesuke from Hayabusa. Hayabusa picks up his look, former best look. friend for the Falcon Arrow, the Falcon Arrow, the Falcon One, Arrow. One, two, three, yes, that's it. that's it. Hayabusa defeats Ganesuke, unbelievable match. He has finally got his revenge, wow, unbelievable.
甘いって言われてもいい俺は自分で信じた道を進んでいきたいだから雁之助一緒にみんなに頭下げてもう一回やり直してくれ雁之助頼む分かってくれよ俺が俺がお前にできるお前にしてやる最後のことなんだよ分かってくれ Looks like Ganeske has mixed emotions now. Well, I can't believe what Hayabusa has said. He said he won't cut his hair off. He'll let him come back to the promotion. I think Hayabusa wants to bury the hatchet. He wants to start from scratch. He wants to renew his Un friendship with Ganeske. Oh! Again. Ganeske attacks him right out of the blue. Once again, this rivalry will continue. There's no way. I just don't see it happening, John. These guys will never be friends again. Ganeske showing his true Ooh. colors with that powerbomb. This match is over. Once again, Hayabusa's love for his friend. Look at this! Wait! Hey! Wow! Wait, Ganeske has no right taking off that mask. He did not win this hair versus mask match. Ganeske was supposed to have his hair cut off because Hayabusa won this match. So now it looks like Ganeske is going to declare this a victory just because he took off Hayabusa's mask. Whoa, and now he's got out the alcohol and the fire. Oh, my God. Are we going to oh, see no. some? Uh-oh. Whoa, oh. he's pouring it all over Hayabusa. He's going to set Hayabusa on fire. This is insane. He's already got the mask. He's already beaten the man. And look at that. Victor Kiona's giving him the fire. I don't believe this. It's insane. Oh, God. Oh, thank goodness. There's Jinsei Shinzaki saving the day for Hayabusa and for FMW. Oh, that was so close. I thought Hayabusa was going up in a ball of flame on that one. Hayabusa needs all the support he can get right now against the evil forces of Ganesuke and Victor. And Flying Kid Ichihara, all these renegades who turned their backs on FMW. <laughs> the hardcore action continues to explode in the rings of FMW. That was a brutal match, and you know what, John? A rivalry that I am sure is not finished yet. But speaking of rivalries, we've got an even bigger one coming your way next as two factions of FMW buttheads in this brutal, bloody match. That's right. A six-man Texas Tornado Come as you are, anything goes match. On the one side, you have the fake, deceitful FMW, the Funk Masters of Wrestling, featuring the Gladiator, Mike Awesome, Mick Foley, Cactus Jack, and of course, the head Funk Master, former NWA world champion Terry Funk, taking on the true, legit FMW, Frontier Martial Arts Wrestling. 
Wing Kanemura, Masato Tanaka, and of course the founding father of FMW, Atsushi Onita. But first, before we go to that six-man Texas Tornado match, we'll feature some highlights of the singles death match pitting Cactus Jack versus Kanemura that led up to this six-man tag team match. Let's go to the highlights and this word from Cactus Jack. Bang, bang! The new hardcore icon, Cactus Jack Mick Foley, has really spilled a lot of blood in FMW rings. And after this one-on-one -on -one death match with Kanemura, their feud continued in the six-man Texas Tornado match. You're not the king anymore! So Kenny Mura, if you want that king of the death match title, then you better step up the plate and be ready to kill me! Because you will have to drag me kicking, screaming, bleeding, and dying! Ready to make that sacrifice? Because I am. Oh, yeah. Dan, I gotta tell you, in this semi main event match, a part of the triple header at the Megumi Kudo final fight. There's a lot of pride at stake here with two factions wanting to prove that they are the real version of FMW. Here we have the Funk Masters of Wrestling and they're taking on the real FMW in the hearts of most FMW fans, Frontier Martial Arts Wrestling. And these guys are ready. Look at this. They don't even wow. want to wait. Wow! Right out of the gate. They didn't even want to wait for the bell. These guys want to go at it right off the bat, even before the ring introductions ended. Unbelievable stuff here. They're all over the ring. We see Cactus Jack in there with Kanemura. Interesting point as well. This was the final match that Mick Foley wrestled as Cactus Jack before he resurrected that per uh, persona in the WWF. So a very interesting point in Cactus Jack's career here. And we have the two elder statesmen going at it outside the ring, Terry Funk and Onita. And no love lost between these That's two in the ring. Sure. No love lost here. Awesome versus Tanaka, who exchanged the ECW world title back and forth on many occasions. Oh, shoulder block by Tanaka. And many people wonder, you know, why those matches were so good oh. at ECW? Because those guys wrestled each other countless times in FMW oh. first. Tope, Tope by Tanaka. And look at this replay, wow, right through the middle rope. And you know what? Awesome can do that exact same move. Great stuff from those two. Always a great match. That's right. I mean, these guys are very versatile, along with blood and guts, hardcore style wrestling. These guys could fly and they could wrestle on the mat as well. Unbelievable. Even Cactus Jack, you might not think of him as a high flyer, but he does some of the craziest flips and falls you've ever seen. 
Cactus Jack in control right now over Kanemura. Those two had a great death match, one on one death match that you could see on FMW Tokyo Pop's King of the Deathmatch videotape. Exactly, that's definitely another great tape worth checking out. If you haven't seen that one, go check that one out too. Oh, and he's got him in the corner now. And look at the others, the four other members of this, they're brawling in the crowd, they're brawling in the stands, they're everywhere in this match. This is no hold barred, Texas Tornado Street Fight Deathmatch. Yeah, I mean, both factions want to up hold the honor of, well, what they consider FMW. I oh, mean, and look at Jack just mercilessly pounding on Kanemura's forehead there. He's opened him up already. We have three different feuds going on in the six-man match. We have Onita versus Funk outside the ring, right. Austin versus Tanaka, and Kanemura versus Cactus Jack. Unbelievable, and they are all over the place. Mike Look Austin at, uh, picking Tanaka up for an awesome bomb. Oh, oh, Tanaka got out of that one. Almost dropped him right to the floor. Forearm smashes by Tanaka. Tanaka very effective with those forearms. And Tanaka is, oh! oh! Tanaka was going for a move of his own, but awesome countered with a shoulder block. And when was the last time you saw a big guy that size doing stuff like that? Exactly. I mean, I remember back in the 1970s, your stereotypical 300-pounder only knew how to punch and kick, right. punch and kick. Awesome can do a lot more than that. And you'll Look at, see here it right he goes! Here. Plancha! Wow! Over the top rope to the floor! Plancha! Over the top rope by a 300-pound man. Mike Awesome truly is awesome. He is unbelievable. Oh, uh oh oh Wait, wait, that's Victor Kinyon with Terry Funk's branding iron. Now, what's he got here? That Victor Kionis, man, he is an evil man. Oh, DDT by Onita in the center of the ring. Yeah, Victor is on the side of the Funk Masters of Wrestling. I'm sure he has some dirty tricks up his sleeve, like lots of evil managers do at ringside. That is for sure. Terry Funk picked him for a reason. It wasn't because he looks cute. Well, there's nothing going to be cute about this matchup. It's six-man Texas Tornado. Ooh. Oh, DDT. No holds barred, come as you are. No weapons barred, that is FMW style. And here we see Mike Awesome and Tanaka again, you know. Oh, suplex, suplex onto the concrete floor. Ooh, yes, let's have another look at that. Intense, oh. intense. Oh, Tanaka's back is hurting. Oh, Tanaka's all bloodied up and hurting. Whoa. Oh, oh, things do not look good for Frontier Martial Arts Wrestling. I mean, these Funk Masters are in control right now. Good Lord, I guess Terry Funk brought that all the way from the Double Cross Ranch in Amarillo, Texas, all the way to Japan, just to stick it in Onita's back. Look at this! Wait, oh! He's sticking it to the back of the founding father of Frontier Martial Arts Wrestling. Oh! Unbelievable action in this match. The devastation is happening everywhere. We can't even keep track oh, of this. Oh! And Onita rolling around, trying to escape that hot branding iron. Oh, oh, Funk just stabbing it into his back constantly. Terry Funk says he's middle-aged and crazy. I think he's old and insane. Yeah, he might have been middle-aged and crazy back in the 80s. Now he's definitely senile and out of control. Oh, well, it... Right now, it's doing the Funk Masters a lot of good. I mean, they're breaking rules left and right. They're getting the job rules? done. Rules? What rules? This is an FMW, no holds barred, Texas Tornado Street oh! match. There's no rules. Oh, the Gladiator, wow. Mike Awesome, hits Tanaka over the head with a chair. Goes for the cover. One, two. Oh, two count. Can't oh, do was... it. Can't do it. Oh, the Funk Masters almost won this match. Kenamura's got a big. Oh, he's got the barbed wire baseball bat. Right now, it's in the hands of Cactus Jack, though. Oh, another trademark of FMW, barbed wire. As if barbed wire isn't bad enough, let's wrap it around a baseball bat. These guys are unbelievable. I mean, before ECW became known as Barbed, barbed Wire City in America, these guys, FMW, were the originators of barbed wire in wrestling. That is absolutely oh, true. Powerbomb by Mike Awesome onto a table. And you know, you bring up a great point about ECW being the natural child of FMW, and by extension, there wouldn't even be a WWF today because they stole their ideas from ECW. So it all goes back to the originators, FMW. That's right. Founded in 1989 by that man with the white shirt, Atsushi Onita. And I would say these two guys in the ring, Terry Funk and Onita, they've had a lot of retirements between them, that's for sure. They just can't seem to give up wrestling. They love it so much, they retire, but they always find their way back to brutality. You know, you've heard the old saying, we've bled, we've sweat, we've paid the price. Well, Onita has bled a lot more than any other wrestler around the world. And a great powerbomb there by Awesome, but the pin broken up by Onita.
Well, Onita really wants to uphold the honor of his league, the true FMW. That is true. Unbelievable that actually Onita oh. is the babyface in this situation. Well, there's nothing cute about his baby face. He has no baby face, but, you know, he has lots of scars. He has more scars than any other wrestler in the world, but that's how much he's willing to pay the price to give the fans their money's worth. That is for sure. There's no doubting that. And Funk continues to work Onita over with the barbed wire baseball bat. And look at Mike Awesome's in the corner. He's got a table in there. What's he planning now? You got to expect that in the rings of FMW. In this Texas tornado, anything goes matchup. Oh! Masato Tanaka into the corner. Yeah, things do not look good right now for the real FMW, Frontier Martial Arts Wrestling. Hey, good Lord, what's Mike Awesome doing? He's trying to bust up that piece of the table. Oh! Ooh. Barbed wire into the bloody forehead of Atsushi, Atsushi Onita. Oh, this is out of control, and things are in the favor of the Funk Masters of Wrestling. An awesome off. Oh! oh awesome! Good, good counter there by Tanaka. This is just crazy. You never know what's oh. gonna, you never know what's gonna happen next with these guys. Oh, oh, oh. there's his, Onita's dishing it out left, right, and center. Everybody's getting that table right over the head. A pin! One, One two, two, three. No. Oh! Good lord, how did Terry Funk kick out of that? Well, Atsushi Onita is willing to take all sorts of crazy punishment, and he could dish it out as well. Even after taking so much. Oh, forearm smash by Masato Tanaka. Uh-oh, uh, what's this? Oh, drop kick by Kanemura. Into a double suplex by Onita and Tanaka. Great, great, great triple teamwork on the part of the real FMW. Oh, two count. And to quote the great Gordon Soley, we are starting to see a lot of crimson masks in this match. Indeed, no question about that. All right, Kanemura on Funk now. They're going at it on the floor. Good Lord, everybody's fought with everybody oh, in this match. Clothesline by the Gladiator, Mike Awesome. And you'll notice the referee really doesn't have much uh, work to do in this match. There's no official tags. It's just no holds barred in true FMW style. But the referee does have a very vital job at the end. He has to slap the mat one, two, three times. And oh, uh oh, 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 uh -oh. here oh, goes no. Terry Funk now. Oh my god, he's doing his best Gene oh. Simmons impersonation right on the back of Atsushi Onita. Unbelievable! Look at this. Wow, just sets Onita on fire. These guys are ruthless. When will it end? Where does it stop? When the referee counts three, this could be it. One, two, oh. The referee's slap on the mat will determine. Who is the better version of FMW? Is it the Funk Masters of Wrestling or is it Onita's Frontier Martial Arts Wrestling? Unbelievable. At this time, it's definitely Funk and his men with the upper hand. Cactus going with a pile driver. Ooh! Oh, stuffed pile driver, FMW style, onto not just one chair, but. Might as well bring the whole front row in. When you see a high impact maneuver onto more than one chair, that is FMW style. Unbelievable. And you see there Cactus Jack ripping out a little bit of his hair there, just like his mankind persona in the WWF. And in fact, he was in the WWF at the time of this match, but they did a suspension angle to explain his disappearance so he could come for this special match in Japan. Oh no, right now, uh, Cactus Jack is going, Cactus Jack is going to the top turnbuckle for a stuffed Ooh, pile driver. Another one. A stuffed pile driver onto the chairs. And the referee counts. One, two. Oh, oh, oh that was close. Unbelievable. Where is Onita drawing his energy from? You know, I guess being the founding father of FMW just gives him that extra bit. He's not going to give up unless he fights a tremendous battle. And his fans here at the Yokohama Arena uh -oh. don't want to see Onita give up either. Uh-oh, flunks back into the juice again. He's got some of that ethyl alcohol. Oh my God, he's pouring it right on Onita's head. Good Lord, he's gonna set Onita's head on fire. Oh no, oh, but Tanaka makes the save for FMW. Unbelievable, whoa. DDT by Onita, DDT by Onita. One, two, oh, oh, that was close. Unbelievable, I can't believe the near falls in this match. Oh, forearm smash by Tanaka onto Mike Awesome. Continuing their feud that carried over into ECW. Ooh. Oh, overhead suplex by Awesome. Wow, did you see the momentum on that? It was enough to put Tanaka right back on his feet again. 
Look at Tanaka goes for the pin. One, two. Oh, oh so close. So close. Look at oh. the determination on Tanaka's face. Unbelievable. I mean, Tanaka couldn't believe it. I thought he, I think he thought he had the match ended right there, but Mike Austin being very resilient. The big man kicked out. Oh, he's got him oh, up. Oh, powerbomb by Tanaka. One, One two. two. Oh, and Cactus Jack breaks it up. These guys, look at these guys. They're all a brutal, bloody mess, and still they continue to brawl like madmen. Oh, Anita's wondering, when is this going to end? When is this going to end? Dropkick by Kanemura. Oh. Tornado DDT. Tornado DDT by Masato Tanaka. Beautiful move. Beautiful. Well done. Dude, this could be it. One, two. No. Oh. Unbelievable. Cactus managed to kick out from that. Wow. Oh. Double forearm from both Kanemura and Tanaka right on the melon of Cactus Jack. Oh! Ooh. It's looking it's looking good for FMW now. I think the Funkmasters are in trouble. Kanemura on the top rope. Oh, leg drop. Leg drop off the top rope by Kintaro Kanemura. Oh, Two and counts. still Jack kicks out again. Unbelievable resilience. But don't count out the FMW boys either. And remember, Kanemura and Tanaka were fighting over leadership in FMW. Whoa! Oh, but they put that all aside to help Onita in his fight against the Funk Masters of Wrestling. And Awesome's going for a powerbomb on Tanaka. Power bomb! Yes, the beautiful. Awesome Bomb! The Awesome Bomb! Oh! oh and On Onita makes the save. Look at this! The Ooh. Awesome Bomb, as only Mike Awesome can do. Great stuff. And Onita right in there for the quick save. And Onita, look at him, a bloody mess on the mat. K Kintaro Kanemura and Masato Tanaka are putting their sort of a rivalry past them in this particular match to team up with Onita. They want to work together as a team representing Ooh. Frontier Martial Arts Wrestling. That is true. They got to band together to get rid of the Funk Masters. And Cactus, oh, Cactus almost getting the pin there on Tanaka. Yeah, in this match, Kanemura and Tanaka cannot try to show each other up. They have oh, to no. work as a unit. No, no. And now what's Funk doing? What's going on in the deranged mind of Terry Funk? Hey, Mike Awesome is on the top Whoa. rope right now for a frog splash. Wow. Oh, look what? at that, right off the top rope. What elevation, and that is more than 300 pounds off the top rope. Oh. oh, and Tanaka still kicks out. These two, whenever these two get in the ring and have a battle, it is crazy. Look at Funk's throwing a table in. And here comes Onita, and what's Onita? Onita's got a chair. Cactus oh. has a chair. Again, you got to expect that in the rings of Frontier Martial Arts Wrestling. You'll see all sorts of crazy action involving foreign objects of all kinds in this Tokyo Pop Home Entertainment Series. I don't even know what to expect anymore with these guys. They've dragged everything in there except the kitchen sink. And now Awesome's got Tanaka. What's he going to do here? Well, the Funk Masters could be just seconds away from a victory here. Good Lord. What's happening? They're not going to put him through the table. Oh my God! Awesome bomb through a table! Awesome bomb through a table! Look at this, right through the table, right off the top rope! Wow! I mean, That's gotta be it. That's gotta be it. Oh, oh Onita, Onita makes breaks it, it up. I mean, an awesome bomb by itself is awesome enough, but an awesome bomb onto a table, that is just devastating. Unbelievable that they got rid of that, got kicked out on that one. Oh! A cover by Onita! And the protege almost pins the legend in that one. I mean, that was a small package by Onita, a, kind of a scientific wrestling move. You know, kind of a surprise because Onita is like the prototype of a brawler in Japan. But he does have that background, and he's smart enough to use it when it comes in handy. And look at this! Moonsault! Good Lord, the crazy Terry Funk in his late 50s moonsaulting off the top rope! Look at, and these guys are dazed. Look at, none of these guys are just out of Oh, it. forearm smashed by Tanaka. Tanaka goes for the cover. One, two, oh, oh, two counts. Awesome kicks out again. And here comes Kintaro Kanemura. Oh, smashes Cactus Jack over the head with a chair. Oh, oh right to the face of Mike Awesome. It one, to be a one two, two, three. three. That's it, oh. that's it. Unbelievable, Kanemura gets the pin on Mike Awesome with the chair shot to the head. Wow, what a finish to a brutal, bloody match. Kintaro Kanemura, kind of the underdog in this matchup, but he really did his team proud. He really did Onita proud, upholding the honor of Frontier Martial Arts Wrestling.
FMW will live on to fight another day after defeating the Funk Masters of Wrestling. That's right. We have, we have found out who the true FMW really is. That's Frontier Martial Arts Wrestling, founded by hardcore legend Atsushi Onita. John, that match had everything. There was blood, there was barbed wire, there was fire. It was six deranged individuals going head to head. A brutal match. But you know what? You think that was brutal? Six guys going crazy on each other? Well, look at what happens in this one. It's only two women, but it is the brutal Yokohama death match, our main event. To show you how far FMW has taken women's wrestling, women's pro wrestling first started in Japan in 1948 as a sideshow attraction in strip clubs. And FMW has taken it a long way, pushing it as a main event attraction at the Yokohama Arena, the Megumi Kudo final fight, featuring Megumi Kudo, the leading lady of FMW, in her final match versus her longtime enemy, Eriko Shark Tsuchiya. But first, let's take a look at the life and times of the first lady of the deathmatch, Megumi Kudo. Megumi Kudo was born on September 20th, 1969. She started her wrestling career with All Japan Women Wrestling in 1986, but never really got a push there, got discouraged, and left wrestling. In 1991, she joined FMW, where she really got a push as the beauty queen of the deathmatch, becoming a role model for wrestlers and fans alike. But after taking all sorts of punishment, and despite her popularity, Kudo decided once again to leave wrestling. Now, before Kudo hangs up her tights for good, she wants one final shot against her greatest rival, Shark Tsuchiya, who stole the WWA Women's World title and the Independent World Women title from her just a month before this match. Kudo must have her revenge before she retires.
全部の吉田生活やってみたいなんですけども、まあ、最後の最後まで、えー、自分が FMW で学んだ、えー、ジャドープロレスそれを貫き通し、えー、個人的にも完全燃焼して、えー、今されたいと思います、えー、あくまでも、えー、シャークツチア、えー、私の力で最後に最後のリングで、えー、勝ってここの FMW に、えー、つないでいってもらえたらいいなと思いますとにかく最後の最後まで、えー、勝負をせず自分はポリシーを持ってリングに立ちたいと思います So please tell us, Dan, what is involved in this Yokohama death match? Well, this is the one we've all been waiting for, the big retirement match between Megumi Kudo and Shark Tsuchiya. This one is going to be nasty. Listen to this. It's a no-rope electrified barbed wire explosion double hell match. And the barbed wire is on two sides of the ring. It's charged with 200 volts of electricity and 40 small explosives. Now, there's no rope on the other two sides of the ring, and the barbed wire barricades are set up side by side with 40 explosives on each side. Total explosive used in this match, John, are you ready? 160. Now, even though Kudo has been in this type of death match before, obviously she's very nervous for this one, as you can see, because this is her final match, her retirement match. The whole locker room and everybody in the Yokohama arena are setting their eyes on this one. It's going to be a good one. And look at the shark. Look at the look on her face. You can tell she's just ready to rip and tear. She's just dying to throw Kudo into that barbed wire. Keep in mind, this whole event, not just this one match, this one main event match, but this entire event was billed as the Megumi Kudo final fight. All eyes are on this ladies match as a serious, hard-fought main event match. And once again, FMW, the pioneers, where in North America would you ever see a match like this on top of a big wrestling card? Collar and elbow tie-up, and Shark is using her strength. Oh, Shark is always going to win a test of strength in cases like that. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. And they're going to have to develop a kind of an interesting strategy here. You're seeing it right now. They're going to have to try and keep in the middle of the ring and stay away from that barbed wire and use the power to push each other into the electrified sides. Those two ladies were very close to that electrified barbed wire just seconds ago. Uh and they are once again. Look, she's trying to push Kudo's head. Oh! oh! Nice reversal by the shark there into a nice suplex. I can't believe this already. The match is barely underway, and they're already right in front of the barbed wire. Uh-oh. You know, the ladies are somewhat limited in what they can do in this match, but at the same time, that makes each and every one of their small movements that much more exciting. And more important, too, because the, slight, the slightest miscalculation, and you're going to end up in that electrified barbed wire. Right. One or two inches of movement can make a difference. Exactly. And look at the shark here trying to push Kudo over the side there. Remember, two sides have no barbed wire, and the outside of the ring is covered in that electrified explosive barbed wire. Oh, Shark desperately trying to push Kudo's face into that electrified barbed wire. And Kudo fighting for all she's worth. Such heart, such determination. Yeah, she, Kudo desperately kicking away at the Shark. There's no way that Kudo's going to end up in that barbed wire. In her final match, no way. The fans don't want that. 
who paid top dollar to see this main event. Here we go. Another test of strength. Greco-Roman knuckle -up. Test of strength. Oh, sharp kicking away at Kudo's midsection. Into the Irish bar. Oh. oh, that was close. Very oh. close. Oh, Shark using using her strength to push Kudo into that barbed wire. But look at the strength and heart and determination of Kudo here. She's doing a phenomenal job at keeping the shark at bay. Unbelievable strength, determination, heart, courage. Megumi Kudo has it all. Yeah, even though Kudo is the underdog of sorts, she lacks size in this match. She can't use high-flying maneuvers. Oh! But she always has the fans on her side and a lot of inner strength as well. And a great little move there, a kick to the knee to take the big shark down. And look it, she's trying to push shark now over into the electrified barbed wire. Oh, this could be it for the shark. Could be deep waters for the shark. Oh, oh. nice oh. baseball slide. But not quite though, it's gonna take a lot to push that massive shark into that bed of pain. You're not kidding, shark is a big girl and Kudo has her work cut out for. Look at this, just on the edge, the determination, unbelievable. What a series of matches these two ladies have had in their career. Shark versus Kudo. It's kind of like the Ali versus Frazier series, where there was an ugly rivalry. It got heated backstage sometimes, but these ladies always gave it their all in each and every match, always giving the fans their money's worth. And you're absolutely right, John, and this match is no different. Both of them struggling, power, strength, determination, heart, courage. It's all here in this match. Heart and courage and beauty. All those traits made Megumi Kudo the most popular woman wrestler in FMW history. Oh, excellent. Kudo fights back. Oh, 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 oh that was close. Almost. Look at, she's like centimeters away from that barbed wire. And that can make the difference. Oh, oh the Irish whip. Oh, oh, oh my God. Oh. It's thrown into the barbed wire right across the back. Look at this, right across her back. Oh, my gosh. Oh, oh, my goodness. And Kudo drops like a house of cards. Look at this. Not only barbed wire, but that was electrified power explosives. Her back has got to be a mess now. Now, Kudo has got to be hurt. Oh. Kudo has got to be hurt not only physically, but emotionally as well. She looks dazed right there. She doesn't know where she's at. And look at how smart the shark is. She's following right up. That back of Kudo went into the barbed wire. Shark is working that back over. Unbelievable, unbelievable. A little bit of scientific wrestling and thinking here in a barbed wire. No hope, no ropes, barbed wire mess. It's unbelievable. Repeated shots to the back from the shark. Shark knows she's in control right now. Kudo is screaming out in pain. The shark is turning this into the shark's tank. This is a scary, this scary situation for Kudo. She's got to get the advantage back. All these fans in this arena are scared as well. Oh, oh. again, another shot to that already electrified, scarred back of Kudo. Well, the shark is not well liked among the fans, oh. but she's you, know, you got to give the shark credit. She's wrestling smart in this match, constantly working over the back of Megumi Kudo. Oh, Ooh. suplex, suplex by the shark. And she goes for the cover. One, two. two, the oh. Kudo just barely kicks out. Unbelievable. You know, and Kudo's trying to fight back, but those punches, she's been sapped of her strength by that trip into the barbed wire. She's really got to suck it up now if she wants to take the shark out. And Shark still has a lot of strength. Oh, oh, Dragon Screw! Dragon Screw by Kudo. What a comeback by Kudo. Where did she, where did she get that from? And here we go. Side headlock by Kudo. Shark uses oh. the power. Oh, she, Shark almost pushed Kudo into that electrified barbed wire. Oh. And here we oh, go. Whoa. Oh, Kudo got out of that one. Waist lock by Megumi Kudo onto the Shark. Reversal by the Shark. Oh! into the barbed wire, Kudo, look. Now look at this, she's been hit in the back. This time, it's a full frontal assault, that's oh. right. She's been hit on both sides by the barbed wire. How is Kudo going to come back from this? How is she gonna hold up? That's right. So Shark has a two on, two on O advantage of sorts over Kudo. Unbelievable, yeah, Shark hasn't even seen. Wait, what a second here. What is that in Shark's hand there? What has she got? That's a sickle. What, a sickle? That This is craziness. Well, this is FMW. You gotta expect craziness like that here in FMW. Look at this, she's going straight for her forehead with the sickle. This is insane. She's carving her up like a Thanksgiving turkey. That referee is checking up on this situation. Well, look at that, you know, even in a match like this where we know it's all out, no holds barred, even the referee is concerned. He wants to know what What's going on here? Look well, at Shark with that. Look at that sickle. It's got a big chain on the end. 
This is brutal. Well, I think the referee is checking to see if Kudo is still able to continue in this match if she's still conscious. It, Kudo can barely oh. walk. Oh! Unbelievable. Chopping her up with Oh, the... Kudo's bleeding from Ooh. the forehead. Oh, my God. The crimson mask is starting to match her crimson hair. This is unbelievable. Kudo's in big trouble now. You know, it's her retirement match, but she could be leaving defeated in this, her final match in FMW. Let's see, so far, Shark has a 2-0 advantage of hitting Kudo into that barbed wire, not once, but twice. And now Kudo is bleeding from the forehead. If this match were judged on points, uh, Shark would be way out in front on points. Oh, unbelievable. And you know what? They call her the Shark, and look at that blood on the face of Kudo, man. Shark is totally in her element, because we all know that when sharks smell blood, that the end is near. Oh, this is just insane. The sadistic shark. Look at her gouging the head, sticking that sickle right into the head of Kudo. Oh, it looks like Kudo is in deep waters now, about ready to drown. Shark is definitely going after her bait. Oh, oh she managed to get away. She's rolling oh. away. Whoa! Good oh, lord. Gonna I put her eye out with that thing. Maybe Kudo is doing this for the fans. She's reaching for something extra to please her fans oh. in her final match. Oh, look at that. Resilience on the part of Kudo. Whoa! Oh, and she puts the shark down. And now Kudo's going for the sickle. Look at that. Oh. Kudo's got it now. Whoa! Oh. Oh. And the shark cuts her off with a big kick to the gut. Oh, no. What can shark do now? Shark's already carved her up with that thing. Good Lord, she's going back to the head again. This is absolutely insane. Oh, the referee can't even believe this brutality. I really don't see good things for Kudo here. I don't know. The way that this has gone so far, I just don't see how she's going to pull off this match. I really think it's a retirement match. I, I can't see her winning. This is unbelievable. Hey, look, Shark is using that chain to choke Kudo. There's, there's no chance. I mean, I understand that Kudo is a strong woman and she's determined and everything, but I don't, this is not looking good for Megumi Kudo at all. The shark is using a sickle. She's using chains. She's doing whatever it takes to go down in history in the record books as the woman who beat Kudo in Kudo's retirement match. Unbelievable. Look at the Kudo. sleeper hold. Shark is using the sleeper hold. Now that cuts off the oxygen and the blood flow to the brain. And with Kudo bleeding like she is, Kudo could be out any second now. And yes, and don't forget, she's also got that chain wrapped around her throat for that just that little bit extra bit of torture. Referee is checking to see if Kudo still has any life in her left. Kudo, this could be it. This could be the finish right here. I can't see Kudo getting out of this. How's she going to get out of the sleeper? She's got that chain wrapped around her neck. She's lost a lot of blood. She's lost a lot of oxygen. Hey, look, it, it, looked, like, it looked like Kudo still had no. some life in her. No, can't be. This she held up her end. hand. No, this has got to be the end. Oh. oh, and finally the shark lets up. I don't believe it. The shark actually let up. Oh, but she's still got the chain around her throat, though. She's still strangling her with that chain. Oh, no, it looks like shark is going to push Kudo into that. Whoa, bar. And she, oh. she sends the shark into the barbed wire. Look at this. Great fortitude by Kudo. Unbelievable. Kudo wrestling on instinct. Totally. She didn't even know where she was. She's got that chain around her throat, yet she knew enough to throw the shark into the barbed wire. Look at that, sticking right into the back of the shark. Well, I don't know if that was a smile on Kudo's face or a sigh of relief. I don't know if Kudo knows where she is. It's hard to tell at this point, but this is definitely the little break that Kudo needs. And the referee is making the count. Shark has to get back into the ring by the count of 20 if she wants to stay in this match. Well, the shark hasn't had near the punishment that Kudo's had. The shark's going to be able to get back in there. But the question is, when she does get back in there, how is Kudo going to combat this? And good Lord, look at Kudo going right over to the edge and pulling her in. That is determination. That is fortitude. That is what the fans of FMW have always loved about Megumi Kudo. Oh, DDT! DDT by Kudo. And the referee goes for the count. One, two. Well, I think Kudo wants to do this for her fans. Kudo wants this to be... A match that she wins decisively. Is this she's trying for like a power bomb or tiger driver maybe? But nope, she blocks it from the shark. Oh, suplex into a bridge by Kudo. One, two. And look, I can't believe Kudo has the strength to bridge like that after all the punishment she's put forth. You know what? She is a special breed. There's no doubt about it that Megumi Kudo is a special breed. Oh, nice reversal by Kudo. Wow. One, two. Well, you're right. You're right. She is a special breed. She combines beauty 
with toughness more than any other wrestler I could think of in history. I just can't believe the stamina and determination of this young woman. It's unbelievable and totally inspirational. Double underhook into a powerbomb. Wow. Powerbomb, what strength that took. One, two. Oh, and the shark kicks out. A beautiful move there from Kudo. Absolutely beautiful. And look at Kudo, look at that look on her face. She's gonna take the shark down. Oh, forearm smash. And a count. One, two. two. Oh. What a comeback by Kudo. She has renewed confidence. The fans are back into this match, hoping that Kudo can end this soon with and a look victory. At this. Hey, look, look, John, she's going for the Kudo driver. The Kudo driver. Oh, uh oh. Shark got out of that one somehow. Missed with a clothesline by the shark. They got to be careful with this oh, no. running around. They're going to end up in the they barbed wire. Oh! And Kudo gets power bombed by Shark into the barbed wire. Look at this. Oh! Wow. Oh my God. So that's it. Kudo has tasted barbed wire three times in this match already. So Shark in that case is 3 and 0. Oh. Unbelievable. Shark has the confidence that she pushed Kudo into that electrified barbed wire. Not once, at, not once, not twice, but three times. And look at this. Kudo can barely pull herself up. She can barely get out of the barbed wire. And the ref's counting. Yeah. Now she is she going to be able to get back in? Kudo has to make it back into the ring by the count of 20. Can she do it? Look at it. The strength, the determination is there. But my god, she's been in the barbed wire so much, she's had her forehead cut up like a Thanksgiving turkey. This is a strong woman. Look at that oh. barbed wire sticking into her. And the shark really wants to stick it to Kudo and to the FMW fans. Shark wants to maintain a hold on that double championship. And what do we got here? Power Ooh. Oh, suplex by the shark. Beautiful suplex by the shark. And Kudo is not moving. Kudo is not moving at all. In this kind of match, neither woman can really move around that much, but Kudo has no movement left. Kudo doesn't even look like she's got a pulse. Oh, suplex. Oh, another nasty suplex right on the back and the head and the shoulders. Shark Tsuchiya is definitely the power wrestler between these two, and, well, she still has a lot of power left in her. There's no doubt about that. Kudo may have the strength and the fortitude and the determination, but for pure brute power, we're talking about the shark. Yeah, it doesn't look like the shark is tiring out at all. She Not still at all. has a lot of inner strength as well as that power. Oh, oh, and another suplex right on the back of the head. Oh. This is it. This is it. Finish. This is it. This has got to be this, the end. This is over. One, two. Oh, oh, and Kudo kicks out again. Unbelievable. This woman, I don't know what she's made of. She is made of the strongest stuff I have ever seen. Well, you're right, and that's one of the many reasons why the fans have supported her for all these years. They admire Kudo's determination in the ring. Whoa! Uh oh! Uh -oh. Using that power. Pile Ooh. driver! Pile driver! Pile driver! Nasty pile driver there. And look at the refs checking Kudo. A pin. This is One, it. Match is done. Two. Three. Oh, oh, oh. Kudo kicks out again. Shark is frustrated. Shark cannot even believe that Kudo is still in this match. Well, I don't blame her. I mean, this is absolutely insane. Where does Kudo pull out these reserves? You know, desperate people do desperate things, and that's obvious on the Shark's part. She's bringing in those chairs. Shark desperately wants to hold on to the belts, and she desperately wants to beat her longtime enemy, Kudo, in Kudo's and look at final this. fight. Kudo can't even stand. Kudo can't even stand. She doesn't even know where she is. She doesn't know what's going on. Hopefully she knows that she's in a sold-out Yokohama arena with all of the oh, fans watching. Pile oh, driver pile driver. Chairs. Good Lord, this is unbelievable. Referee Max makes over. Out. One, two, three. Uh, no. What? She kicked out again. <laughs> I'm flabbergasted. I can't even talk. This is unbelievable. The reserve, the strength of Megumi Kudo. Well, like you said, Kudo is a rare breed. But there's been none like her before. Uh-oh. Wait a second, John. Wait a second. What's the shark got in her hand there? She's got something. It looked like a little bottle. We're not talking gasoline like with Terry Funk, are we? Remember, this is FMW Hardcore. No! Oh! oh, my God. A fireball to the back of the head. You got to expect that crazy Whoa. stuff from FMW. Look at that in her back. Look at, and the referees even got to jump on Kudo to put out the flames. Unbelievable. This shark is sadistic as they come. I don't even think a real shark is as bad as this woman. Unbelievable. Again, shark will do whatever it takes to win any match, especially a match involving her enemy, Megumi Kudo. And oh. Kudo kicks out again. And look, did you see that shark had her knee and her leg right across the throat of Kudo, and Kudo still managed to kick out.
Unbelievable. And Sharka using that upper body strength and power once again on Megumi Kudo with a power bomb. Oh, this and has got to be it. This has got to be it. Oh, one, two, oh. This, uh, I am totally flabbergasted. Kudo is unbelievable. Well, you know what? Megumi Kudo may lack in physical strength or power. She more than makes up for it with inner strength and determination. This is wild. This is amazing. And it's, you know, it's a shame that whether she wins or loses, she retires because FMW and the wrestling world are losing a true champion with oh. Kudo. And this, oh, oh! And both of them end up in the barbed wire. Oh my oh. God! And Kudo falls on top of the shark. Two, One, two, three. three. Oh, oh, that's it, I that's it. it. Kudo wins the match. Whoa. What an unbelievable finish. They both end up in the barbed wire. Kudo falls on top of the shark. That's right, the winner of the double title and the winner of her retirement match, the lovely Megumi Kudo. in that final match absolutely spectacular Megumi Kudo managing to retire as champion she defeated the shark they fought through the barbed wire the explosives a spectacular finish a spectacular match a spectacular card all round sure was April 29th 1997 the Yokohama arena the Megumi Kudo final fight to be remembered for a long time to come and let me tell you, ever since FMW was first founded in 1989, right up to this very day, Frontier Martial Arts Wrestling has always been willing to take more chances than any other wrestling organization, thus making its action more unpredictable and that much more exciting. For Dan the Mouth Lavransky, I'm Straight Up John Watanabe. See you next time for more Hardcore Action. Brother!